This is another installment of Genetics Not a Problem, and today's Not a Problem is X-linked genes, and we're going to do some simple monohybrid as well as some uh, dihybrid crosses. Uh, so let's start off with an easy one. Red-green color blindness is caused by an X-linked recessive mutation. So whenever you start, um, start off seeing this X-linked, you know it's on the X chromosome, so you might as well just write down the chromosomes of the people involved, and since we're mammals, we're on an XXXY system. Um, and now uh, if a colorblind man, so you can go ahead and write his allele, so he's, he's going to show whatever he has, so he must have a colorblind allele, uh, and he's going to marry a carrier, so she, by definition, is a heterozygote. So a carrier is a heterozygote for a recessive allele. And so she's got normal color vision, but, but of course he's colorblind because he doesn't have a little backup copy like we do. Um, which of their children are expected to be colorblind? Um, so now you're just going to write, a, uh, write your, your regular Punnett square, except this time you're going to put those X and Y chromosomes along the side in addition to the alleles. Okay? So normally we tend to just put the alleles um, on the outside of the Punnett square, but when you're dealing with X-linked genetics, it's a good idea to, to write the X and Y chromosomes as well. So when you approach these problems, you should really just write out this X, Y, Punnett square right off the bat and just maybe circle that to remember that those are boys and remind yourself that, that those are the girls. Um, and then you can bring down your alleles just like you would with a regular Punnett square. So she's got two bad alleles. So she's colorblind, um, but, but she's not. She's looking good. Um, he's got the the bad allele from his mom, okay, and uh, then he's got the good allele from his mom. So, so uh, in this outcome, uh, half the boys are colorblind, like this one right here, and half the girls are colorblind. So the outcome is the same for um, boys and girls, but of course you could probably think of ways to set this up where um, the outcome would be very different. Let's move on to uh, sort of a, a dihybrid uh, autosomal plus X-linked problem. So these are a little more complex. Um, we're talking about fruit flies, and in the fruit fly, we're told that uh, red eyes are dominant to white. So let's pick some symbols that make sense to us. I tend to uh, to use the mutant as maybe being a, a, a small W, um, and then the red eyes I'll put as just a plus for the, for the normal color. Um, and we're told this is an X-linked trait, so I'm just going to remind myself that that this is on the X chromosome, and that white is recessive. Okay, and we're also told that uh, straight wings are dominant to curly, and that this is autosomal. So let's say um, curly is recessive to uh, wild type. Okay, and again, the the idea here is there really are uh, autosomes that you could write here, but it, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to write the alleles here, um, and here we're going to write the chromosomes because that's going to help us out. Um, so uh, we're told, uh, assume that we are dealing with flies that have normal sex chromosomes, i.e. no non-disjunction. And I, and I make that clear because in a lot of textbooks they really focus on um, some of these early experiments um, in, in fly genetics that really uh, help us figure out about X-linked genes, um, and, and to illustrate those, they often show us cases of non-disjunction. Um, and then now we're asked, if a, if a white-eyed, curly-winged female, okay, so if she's white-eyed, we know that she has to be XW, XW, okay, and she's curly-winged, we know that curly-winged is recessive, so she's got to be little c, little c, and then she's going to mate with a red-eyed male, so he's got the normal allele, and he's got a Y because he's a male, um, and he's homozygous for the straight-winged allele, so he's plus plus at the wing. What will their progeny look like? Well, let's, let's cross them. So first of all, let's deal with the wings. So you can tell right off the bat that if all of the offspring are going to be C and plus, and we know that um, curly is recessive, then they're going to be all straight winged. Okay, that goes for all of the progeny. Um, but then let's look over at the, at the sex chromosomes, and you can see there's really only going to be two classes here. Okay, from, from the mom, they, they have to all get the XW. Okay, if they get the Y, then, then they're males. Um, but if they get these, this X plus 
from dad, then they're females. Okay, so here, um, the females, the females are going to have red eyes, right? Red eyes because the white is recessive. But the boys, right, the males are going to have white eyes. So the answer is um, the, the, the males will have white eyes and straight wings, and the females will have red eyes and straight wings. So in this next question, you're told that the nematode worm C. elegans um, is a hermaphrodite, and, and XX animals um, are capable of uh, producing both oocytes and sperm. Um, and then she can use these to uh, self-fertilize right, to produce uh, a diploid zygote. Now, uh, males can arise, but they're rare because they arise by non-disjunction, okay, meaning, so if I'm, if I'm a hermaphrodite and I've got my two X chromosomes, normally I would make an oocyte that has an X, and, you know, all my sperm would also have an X, um, and when those would come together to make an XX hermaphrodite. But if something were to go wrong, and I was maybe going to have one, uh, one gamete that really didn't have any, uh, X chromosome at all, maybe this X, maybe both, all, both my X's went into one here. Now, if this uh, this gamete then meets up with maybe a regular um, oocyte or sperm, this is going to be fertilized, and now we're going to have what's called an XO individual, and that's going to be male. And now remember, when, when that individual goes to uh, undergo a meiosis, uh, half of the gametes will, will get an X but then half of the gametes will get nothing, okay? But keep that in mind. And they ask you, which of the following two statements are true? The first one says, self-fertilization is asexual, while cross-fertilization is sexual. Okay, so that, that is definitely not true, okay? Self-fertilization is not asexual, okay? Anytime you have the production of gametes via meiosis, and those gametes can come together through the process of fertilization to create a diploid individual. That is definitely sex. Okay, so the concept here is knowing sex when you see, knowing sex when you see it, um, and both self fertilization and cross fertilization are sexual reproduction. Okay, so that's that's not true. This whole statement is false here. Um, the next one says uh, self fertilization will rarely produce males, and, and we know that that's true because you can only get them by by non disjunction. So that's that part of the statement is true. Um, uh, cross fertilization will produce 50% males, and that is also true because, as we said, if you if you are a male, if you are that XO male, right, half of your gametes are going to have are going to have no X chromosome. So that means when you when you fertilize a hermaphrodite and all of her gametes have one X, 50% um, of the progeny are going to be XO. So this is the true statement.